everyone! <laughs> Welcome to Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. Dave from Australia. Both All literally and physically. <laughs> Um, welcome Indeed. to the streaming tonight. We are back partially in the studio. I'm in the studio. Um, and yep. I, I don't Leona's see anyone in the, in the chat. Too, yeah. Well, <laughs> yes. Leona is I also in the studio. I broke in. I was like, I'm not allowed, but I'm tired of not being where I'm meant to be. It's yeah, not the same. <laughs> yep. I, I really like that now we both have wood paneling behind us. <gasps> we do. We match. It's it's like yep, we thought things out. <laughs> almost. Almost. <laughs> um, so, oh, what are you painting today, Dave? Today I'm going to paint the um, the orc barbarian from the frameworks line from WizKids. Oop, there we go. Get it up nice and close to the camera, finding the right spot. The tough part is that I'm on a uh, slight delay, ever so slight. So when I'm looking at myself on the screen, the movements are about a second behind. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying something a little bit different to this all. I'm gonna, starting with a purple undertone, and I'll go up to like green skin, but rather than just starting with dark green, or just lighter green, and work with the purple. Just for a bit of experimentation. I like that. Could be fun. Just something a little different. <laughs> I guess. Then, what, then who are you working on? I am working on the Snake God from the uh, Temple of the Snake God kit that we had last time. And I have the snake all painted up, very reminiscent of a uh, corn snake that I once had as a pet. Right. Probably about the same size, too. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to be working. Oh, I can move down there. There we go. Um, so now I'm going to be working on the base and um, everyone will get to see me probably ruin this lovely paint job that I've done on the snake trying to get that Indiana Jones hat painted. Because <laughs> if I knew it was there, I totally would have done it first. But it was ever so lovely of a surprise. Um, I'd still get a good chuckle out of that. Um, yep. What is everyone at home painting? I don't see anyone in the chat yet. I don't know if that's because they're not there and we're just talking to ourselves, or if that's because um, there's some kind of. We got a new, we got yeah. a new chat feature or something. I think something's working a little bit differently, but yeah, I, I can't see anyone in chat just yet. We'll, we'll wait for them. They'll come. I'll hold out hope. <laughs> perhaps they're perhaps they're all out doing their holiday shopping. All I want for Christmas is, oh no, the, there uh, they are. JT or, says hello, <laughs> Betsy says hello. Says, hey, I'm working on some wargs and a huge spider from the Lord of the Rings. Oh, so Shelob, that's great. Um, <laughs> currently painting, uh, JT says, currently painting my carnomorphs from Nemesis. Having airbrush troubles though. Oh, that's not good. Oh, I definitely not good. I don't have good. enough airbrush experience to really offer any assistance other than like I think the most I've worked with an airbrush is if you remember those like pens that you could blow into from like elementary school or middle school <laughs> like that just like yeah right just don't spit in it yep. just just blow like it awesome so, so yeah fortunately I can't see the chat Oh no, you can't see the chat. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, you know how it's, it's, it's coming up on the screen there. Um, which oh, there see, we go. But unfortunately, unfortunately my- you're um, no, It's oh, no, the wait, same. Wait, I can move, I can move me around. There we go. No, there's a, a like a little smaller box that shows me what's happening <laughs> rather than Dave's one Dave's learning delay. the technology. Uh, Josh no, Potter says, really. hello all, working on assembling 80 Mantic Plague Zeds for Dead Zone. Uh, JT says, nice. haha, got my kids some of this couple of years ago. That just sounds messy to me. <laughs> like, I remember that <laughs> as a child, and I remember them being messy when I was a child. <laughs> so I feel like as an adult, I'm just going to be like, that's really messy. <laughs> Far too messy. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, that's good. 
So I, I do have to let everyone know that the uh, the weather in Australia has been like uncharacteristic. You can do it uncharacteristically. Uncharacteristic. It's been uncharacteristic. So uh, yes, rather than being uh, the start of summer, lots of sunshine and delightful beach <laughs> weather. It has been uh, raining for the last three weeks. Oh no! Long time to be raining. But uh, finally there are blue skies and it is incredibly windy now. Like very, very windy. So hopefully the house can blow away. So that's a little connection to Oz. <laughs> so what are you um what are you planning to do with those uh little snakes? Um I'm thinking you think of, paint them? Yeah, I'm thinking of painting them maybe brown or um maybe uh maybe green. But if I do them like brown, I feel like it would uh, make the orange stand out more, and I could probably do a tiny okay. little pattern on them. Right. Um, because I I really want the the big guy to be the main focus. Yeah. Um, sure. But I feel like the brown would stand out just enough from the the gray of the the stone and everything to. Okay. Work well with it. Well, it should be. Interesting. Yeah, I think it'll. I think work I'd be out. leaning a little bit more. Oh, sorry. I was um, saying, I think it'll work out. I think I'd be out. leaning a little bit more towards uh, some, maybe some touch of blue. Oh yeah. Like a desaturated blue, just to balance it's against that orange. It's Uh, and I do have to say that I've been so I've been here in Australia for three and a half weeks, and I have not seen a snake yet. <laughs> I have not seen. They a snake. heard you. They heard you on the show. They were the snakes were listening. They were like, "That man wants to murder us." <laughs> yes. <laughs> Better not show up at his house. I wish that worked with yep. spiders, but no matter how threatening I try to sound, the spiders know that I won't kill them. They know it's... They're like, she's lying. <laughs> I'm going to guess that it's the wind. Connection okay. issues. Yeah. Probably. Probably. It all comes through the phone tables. So... But uh, we'll get there. I have seen plenty of spiders, though. That's the one issue I have with visiting Australia is that I want to do it. I will do it. <laughs> I'll get over it. It'll. I'll make it happen. You'll just be able to hear me screaming from Australia every day I'm there. But that's okay. <laughs> like I will persevere. I will make it happen just for my love of all the other parts of Australian wildlife. And apparently they just discovered a coral reef, like another one okay. on the Great Barrier. Uh, it was in the news Oh, yesterday. like further out? Or? Yeah. Oh, wow. They were doing like some kind of exploratory ocean thing and they found a really super tall one that's like bigger than certain buildings. And yeah, they were like, yeah, wow. we thought everything was dying, but this is... Not dead. Yay. Not dead. Hooray. <laughs> um, so That's like some cool. good environmental news. Also good environmental news, even though ice caps are melting. Um, there are certain places in um, Alaska and Canada where they think it will actually expand the salmon population naturally. Okay. So the bears won't starve. So that was cool. That's good. I was like, yay, not as horrible news about the environment as it could have been. Good job. We've, yeah, yeah. could have been worse. <laughs> yeah. I got to um, hang out with some uh, friends earlier in the week, my old uh, Australian friends. Uh, and one of them uh, is very excited to let me know that uh, be featured in, um, well, she's going to have her photography in Australian Geographic. 
Oh, wow. That's good. And it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely, definitely cool. Um, but they're, they're doing a, um, a series at the moment on uh, endangered species. And it's a, like flora and fauna. So it's taking photos of a, uh, a particular plant that's uh, endangered. And it's, it's sort of at the moment, it's only found in one particular area. Mm-hmm. It's swampy. There's just so many stories about how when she met went to meet the rangers there, so they could take her out to where the, where it was found to photograph it for um, Australian Geographic. Uh, they were in waders, but they hadn't told her to come in waders. Oh so she no! Was there, like, shorts and sneakers, and had to wade out through the swamp. And halfway through, they were like, "Oh, I, I think we should have told you there are, there are leeches here." <gasps> So. Oh no! <laughs> she, said that, <laughs> she said that at one point oh. <laughs> she was getting getting like the, the probably what ended up being the best shot. Of <laughs> like she looked at the camera and she like turned her head slightly. She had like five pieces along her arm. <laughs> I have a, a not as terrifying story. That should, someone should have been taking a picture of her <laughs> at that moment because you know how they always have the pictures yeah. of the National Geographic people, like what we do for art. Someone should have been doing that. Um, I was at a modeling shoot like three years ago and it was in a river um, as for some reason, like so many of the shoots. There's like a thing where like when people hire me to model, they're like, that's a girl is not afraid of jumping in a river. Um, Yep. (laughs) And I'm like, no, sure not. Um, But I was in a river and um, I didn't know there were fish. Like, I knew there were fish in a river, but I didn't know these fish liked to nibble. Like, because it was like oh, a okay. creek. Yep. It wasn't like a river Nibbly river. Fish. It was like a little... Yeah, and they liked to nibble. Yep. And there were also little little leeches that apparently lived there. I didn't know in Virginia that that was a possible thing. I, right. Yeah. Like, I just... I had like a small cut on my hand. I looked down and there's just this little tiny thing trying to get like into my cut. And I was like, oh my God, what is that? And like, I, ca- I call my friend <laughs> and I'm like talking to my friend. Yep. And I was like, what is this? And he's like, oh, it's probably just a leech. And I was like, yep. I was not prepared. I would have been. You weren't more prepared to pre- encounter the. No. <laughs> you were get prepared to encounter the, the height of medicine? Of, of, of it, was, it saw my cut, and it was like, let me heal you, Gretchen. Let me heal you. Yep. Let me heal <laughs> your you. wounds. Let me, let me draw away your vases. <laughs> um, and that's how, you know, and, you know, I woke up the next day, cut gone. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, modern science. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that was that was an experience. Um, people should warn yep. people if they're going to be in rivers. What else lives in the exactly, rivers? Exactly. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> Josh, don't don't assume just... that everybody knows. <laughs> well, especially if you're in a place that you you might not be like I don't I know what lives in Louisiana rivers. I don't know what lives in like Mar- uh, Virginia rivers. Apparently. I wasn't expecting yeah. there to be dangers. The most I've ever been afraid of in like a, a Maryland river has been uh, we have copperheads. But I'm I'm yeah. always like I'm loud first. I'm, I'm loud in the water. I'm like get away anything that lives here. I'm here. <laughs> I'm not gonna sneak <laughs> up on anything. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> The pre-shoot photos are great. They're just me being like, ah! John Potter says leeches are the height of medical technology. I mean, they use them for a bunch they of are things indeed. still. They, they still use leeches. Yeah? Yeah, yeah they oh, still yeah. use to um, help bring blood flow back to, to limbs and stuff. Okay. Uh, yep. There's medical grade I leeches. Guess that makes sense. Medical grade leeches. Fun fact. Which aisle are they in at CVS? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> that would be crazy. That's good. But yeah, she was. Uh, my, my friend was saying that uh, 
Australia has, uh, over the last like five or six years, changed their uh, approach to uh, how they deal with endangered species. Um, like previously, there was like if, if you had an endangered species, you found an endangered species on your land, if, or you had some endangered species habitat on your land. They would say, "Radio, let's wall that off. You can't do anything with this land." Sort of what's the you. So people would not feel an incentive. They would be <laughs> incentivized to report the endangered species, which would then lead to further degradation of the habitat. Yeah. So now they actually, um, if they find, or if you find it on your land and you report it to the government, uh, you get a grant. Oh, nice. That's great. The, um, the value of what you might have been about to do with your land. Uh, and said that it's, it's definitely working. People are feeling um, kind of a, strangely enough, people are feeling a bit more of a sense of pride about um, being able to, to do something to help kind of thing, uh, even though it's obviously slightly mercenary. But, uh, yeah. But it is good. I, I think it's definitely a good, uh, a good approach. It's up the... Uh, the narrative. James was asking, um, what's the biggest huh? spider in Australia? Oh, I'm not sure what, um, what the largest visual spider would be. I can look uh, real quick. The one that <laughs> I feel like whatever it is, it's just like, it's... Didn't they just find like what is it funnel web spiders? They just found one. Is it funnel webs? Are those in Australia? Sure. Yep. yep. Yeah, they uh, they're doing. Um, they just found a really, really unusually large one, and they okay. were super excited about um, about it because they could make anti venom with it. So they were encouraging people to find. Um, really, really large um, funnel web spiders, and to bring them in for the um, to milk them for anti venom. Um, All right. Interesting. I did not know that. Why? Why do I know about more about right. Australian wildlife than you, Dave? Well, more recent things. I, I think <laughs> the news hasn't filtered through to Australia yet. So, um, but I think. I have a feeling that there's a um, a uh, a bird eating spider. That yeah, that sounds correct. I think so. Yeah. I remember the spider stuff because I'm terrified of it. Every time I see, the... <laughs> I remember my fears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would rather face but... a cassowary. So yeah, they call them giant huntsman spiders. Oh, oh okay, no, that yeah. sounds awful. That sounds large. Oh, excuse me. Actually, that's in Laos. That's in Laos. Never mind. Um, right. That's not Australia. Well, I don't so like that I any better. in Australia is that there's a tarantula that's called a whistling spider. Do right. To, does it actually noise, whistle? It's provoked. What does it do? The, the only ones I've seen of it. it whistles. They whistle. It actually whistles. Well, they whistle. A, they whistle a happy tune. <laughs> yeah, so Let me. Uh, I'm trying to find. Uh, Two point four inches long and leg span of six point three inches. How does it whistle? Well, it doesn't actually. That's whistle. size of your How hand. Do, I hate that. I hate that it, it so much. That's Sheila. It's just the sound it sounds like when it's angry. Sounds like whistling. How does it fake well, whistle? How, how, do they... <laughs> how does it? How does it mimic whistling then? It, it, it puffs. Up, it puffs up its lungs. And they don't have lungs. Whistle. They have book gills. How oh. do you whistle with book gills? These, At least I, these ones do have lungs. Oh, and they're found. I'm they're sorry. Found in, they're found in Queensland. Right. Okay. Uh, which makes sense because that's where it's like more jungly, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. More tropical. Um. But I, the owner, I've just sent you a uh, a photo of a huntsman spider, like a regular sort of household huntsman spider. Okay. 
hate that so much. The, no. What regular household huntsman? <laughs> <laughs> I like we get wolf spiders occasionally, and like some of those wolf spiders just get so big, and I. Yeah. I once saw one in my house, and out of the corner of my eye, I thought it was a mouse. Right. Yep. And then I was like, that mouse <laughs> has a lot of legs. Indeed. And it wasn't a mouse. It was. I screamed rather loudly. I'm pretty sure my husband's, um, the guys he was gaming with, heard me through the mic before my husband heard me with, like, the earphones on. Because I was like, right. absolutely not. We stopped the game. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Excellent. Stop your raid. I'm in danger. <laughs> Uh, just says, fun fact, the smaller the pincers on a scorpion, the more potent the venom is. I guess that makes sense. It's less likely to cut you apart. So, if yeah, the venom. Yeah. So, uh, so you're saying boots. There we go. There we go, Gretchen. Get a green. Yep. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. Look at it. It's just a yeah. texture that I don't enjoy. There's there's yep. something about the way spiders move that just wigs me out deep in my I don't know what ancestor of mine died via spider. <laughs> <laughs> right. But they were they they put that fear into their their prodigy. They were like we will never be harmed by this again. All of our ancestors shall fear the spider. Um excellent. Yeah, I, mm, not about it. That's <laughs> Josh, a shame. One of the most deadly scorpions in the world lives in Georgia. That's cool. Scorpions, I don't mind as much. <laughs> <laughs> There's just something, like, like obviously if I see something that looks potentially venomous, I'm not going to be like, let's touch it. Um, yeah. But scorpions don't wig me out as much. They move like something should move. You know what I mean? What, on, like, no. I don't, they, I don't they, just move, <laughs> they move normal, but spiders, spiders move in a way things shouldn't move. I don't know how. Okay. To... I'm, yeah, I'm not. I'm not I feel like spiders have like a scamper to them that I just don't enjoy. Okay. Right. So avoid scampering around for it. Maybe. Sure. Maybe. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, I'm going to hold up the um, dude to the camera there. There we go. Sorry. No, no, you're good. Can you see that? Oh, i got to move now. Wait. There it is. Yeah, it's looking pretty neat with the uh, the purple underneath. Yeah. I'm gonna go through and do the sort of the highest green, and I might add a little bit of uh, yellow to it. My palette is the purple. So, oh, um, this guy's got a lot of muscles. Not as muscular as. That's good. I just missed, uh, did Betsy, was Betsy saying something in the chat about, um, about spiders? Betsy says, I know exactly what you mean. They aren't predictable and they can jump at you. Yes, that's also why the big giant cockroaches down in the south are terrifying because down okay. south, <laughs> they fly at you aggressively and that's also right. wrong. I wasn't expecting, when I moved up from Louisiana where they're, there, like, I didn't realize that there were other species of roach that were beetle-like and almost, okay. um, almost sweet in comparison to to what <laughs> lives down there. <laughs> Someone was like, "That oh no, a cockroach!" And I was like, "That little thing, it squishes." <laughs> 
They don't such, squish such in Louisiana. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, that that di- actually dies. That <laughs> um, it's not yeah. even flying at us. It's not aggressive. It's not coming right um, for us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Excellent. I have opinions about <laughs> certain bugs. About cockroaches? Yeah. Yes. That's fine. But cool. What are you? Uh, what color are you driving? I am driving. Do you say what color? Do you say what parts? Yeah. No. What color? Ah, I am dry brushing on that. That's not the color. That's silver. Uh, I am heavy blue gray. I've been using all cool toned grays to try to uh, okay. contrast with the brightness of the orange. Yep. Um, and build up some stony texture. And I'll probably lighten up a little bit of that and go along some of the edges before I go in for those snakes. But cool. I just want everything to kind of look a little, a little roughed up. No, it's looking good. Yeah, I like it so far. There's definitely really nice uh, texture on that, on that face. Yeah. Right. I think it'd be, uh, we, I'm not sure, it, we have the, um, uh, there's like layer of the serpent folk or something like that. Um, do, we, the... do we have it in studio right now? Yeah. We don't. I'm sorry. Okay. That could be a cool one for us to get to sort of return to snakes and creepy crawlies in a, in a month or two's time. Yeah, I can't. I think oh, okay. So it came out in the spring. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure it was available when I looked. Um, oh, okay. But, but yes, I can definitely get those. Yes, I'm, I'm, enjoying, I'm enjoying these epic encounters. Yeah. They're really quite nice. And I like yeah, how it takes us a little bit to, uh, to paint them, too. I like having a little bit of... Uh, time to kind of dedicate to making them look nice. Yeah. That's well, definitely good. Mm. Okay. I'm not sure if that yellow is going to work. I might need to go for a... Uh, Bring it with slight change plans for that light green. You can feel easy to It's pretty pale already. This will help going into that. Also, Dave, I sent you the Twitch chat as like the pop out Twitch chat uh, in case you. Oh, okay. Want to in case you want to like open it up and have it small. But. I would do that now. Um, <laughs> also, hello to Tim. I don't think we said hi to you. And also Gary, thanks for joining. And Sean. Um, and also Bromptonot, thanks for joining. Cool, excellent. Hello, everybody. Spiders hang welcome, in welcome. your webs and end up in your face, which scorpions don't do. Yeah, because okay. scorpions are <laughs> politer. I don't know. <laughs> James says the last That's scorpion true. I saw was shot with a shotgun. Wow. Okay. That's <laughs> wow. that's a that's an aggressive dislike of the scorpion. That's <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have a feeling this person holding that shotgun wasn't thinking. Oh, look how it moves so normally. <laughs> <laughs> I once I remember being in high school and someone asked the class I forget why it was relevant I think it had to do with a book because it was like English class or something but someone asked the class um, are you the type of person who like kills bugs or doesn't kill bugs 
And right. I remember the question being directed at me, and I was like, well, are they icky? And then the entire class devolved into a, what what qualifies as icky? And if it was okay, yeah. like, where was the line for bug morality? With like, right. <laughs> it got very, like, ethics related. And I was like, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> um... Excellent. Like very Roman Emperor styled. Doth it be icky? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Like widow spiders. Down. Daddy long legs. <laughs> Up. <laughs> no, I can't deal with daddy long legs. I'd be like, no. I think really though, like with me, it's how close are they to me? Right, do I okay. have do I have an exit plan? Do I have an escape yep. strategy or am I trapped? Because if I'm trapped, that's not good. <laughs> you're going out through, you're going out through the spider. Yeah. I'm not. Spider I'm not trapped, surviving that I, one. Yeah. Can't do that. But if I, if I have an escape plan, but I also can't just kill spiders because they, they crunch and I can't kill things that crunch. Um, <laughs> I just cry. I, I also can't get really close to them because then they're going to obviously jump on me. Um, yeah. They're devious like that. Um, all eight of their little eyes. They are. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think the last time there was like a spider issue where I was like, oh my gosh, there's a spider and I can't escape from it. And it's like, it was on my car. Um, I was going to swords practice and I had a fader. I had a, a sword with me. And so I like, and just... Right. Hit it. Um, because I was three feet yep. away, because the sword. I was like, oh, I can't, like, I don't have to get close to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, there was one time when, um, yeah. when actually, like, I mentioned this room last time. So this, uh, this doorway here, like, the, the room behind it used to be my bedroom. Uh, when I was a kid, and I had, um, recently started archery in the country and I had some um, I had like a compound bow and had some uh, arrows with hunting heads so like pointy and flat and sharp and there was one night I woke up and I looked up and there was a big hunting spider on the ceiling huh, probably like no. that big and I was like ah, I know you're a huntsman I know you're gonna fight me but so I reached no. over and I grabbed one of the arrows from the hunting head and just went. Did it. Ah, no, then they're too. Pull it down, mm. put it aside, and went back to sleep. Mm. There's just a lot uh, there with that. Yeah. That I don't appreciate. <laughs> right. They saying I should have slept somewhere else for the night. <laughs> I would have just been like, I'm sorry, I can't live here anymore. That's why I couldn't live in Australia. <laughs> I can only visit Australia because if I lived in Australia, I would have a heart attack and I would die. Right. Um, I would do my best, though. <laughs> I'd be like, look at our spider friend. And then I would just... Uh, um. Yep. Josh says, I had a copperhead in my hobby room once. Had to make a quick work of it. Country life, what can I say? Yeah, you know. That's, wow. Yep. <laughs> country life. I can remember rattlesnakes <laughs> on my grandparents' property. <laughs> yeah. I would not like those. Uh, okay. Rattlesnakes are polite. They warn you. <laughs> You're right. Oh, good. How's that? Yeah, Are people know. enjoying that? Boy. I think it's looking pretty good. I still can't get over that uh, that very Hellboy oh, yeah. kind of lantern jaw. Yeah, he does look like Hellboy. He just needs yep. like a, that fist. <laughs> <laughs> Next one I do, I'll be red. There you go. So are you highlighting with a cream color? 
Yeah, so um, I started with so I started with the hex lichen um, from uh, Vallejo. There we go. Man, this being one second behind is terrible. Uh, there we go. Hooray. Uh, and then I sort of highlighted up through um, Castellan Green. Oh no! Oh no! It's okay, it'll reconnect. <laughs> You're back. I'm back! We saw Castellan Green. Very close. <laughs> yes, Castellan Green. And then uh, at least in green. And now I've, I've mixed in some of the uh, ivory from Vallejo model color. And so I haven't taken it all the way up to the ivory, but uh, I think I'm going to do a final highlight in the, the face and the, the left shoulder area. Just give it a nice sort of focal, focal point. And that would be good. Black, uh, James says the most deadly snake um, is the is down under. I think it's the black mamba. I think the black mamba is the most deadly snake, but I think it's in Africa. I have a feeling uh, that it might be Africa as well, yeah. Yeah, I think it's Africa. We have the red belly black snake. The red belly black snake has, um, is, is what color? Red and black. I Correct. hope so. I hope it's not. <laughs> I hope it's not a misnomer. That would be awful if it was like, oh yes, and the most venomous snake we have, the red-bellied black snake, and then someone's like, oh thank goodness, I was just bitten by a pink polka dotted yellow snake. And they're like, oh yeah, no. that's it, right there. <laughs> yep. Sorry, that was a uh, yeah, that was uh, the joke to fool the tourists. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's just now a very practical way the uh, Sydney funnel web is so called because it's only found in Sydney it makes a funnel shaped web um, so yeah, we're very big on our practical naming I feel like venomous things should all have very practical names because um they should be easy to identify. Right. So the wolf spider, yep. it, it turns you into a wolf. That's the thing. Absolutely. Oh, okay. That's, that's how it works. It's, it's, it's not, just, a, it's not an eight. It's not because it hunts or anything. It's fine. No. <laughs> Sometimes you can Excellent. even hear a little awoo in the, diff, the, the distance before it sneaks up on you. And I think, um, like, Wolverine became Wolverine because he was bitten by a radioactive Wolverine. Yeah. That's the real origin story. <laughs> the origin story they don't want funny? you to know. The forbidden origin story. No. It is. They'd much rather have put out that movie, Wolverine Origin, than tell the truth. But, uh, oh, no. oh, no. yeah, I'm really happy with how it's done. I might just leave it there. I'm done. <laughs> the next half of the show is just watching Gretchen paint a bunch of little snakes. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, you know what I've forgotten to do? But no, so get all that flesh done, and then I'm like, "Oh, look at that hand there! I didn't paint the hand. Oh, the hand, not a glove. That's like a bracer." <gasps> oh, I like oh, <laughs> What a good frame to freeze on. My apologies, everybody. I like what Mike says, that a wolf spider, maybe a wolf spider was actually bit 
by Wolverine. Ooh, oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Plot twist. Yeah. Wolverine just goes around Very making cool. wolf spiders. Spider. <laughs> don't know how that worked, but you don't know. Well, they can take they're... care of like. I was gonna say you can take care of six at a time. <laughs> I was gonna say yeah, you don't know it, but their exoskeleton just turns to to metal. It's fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> awesome. What's the metal? Oh, I knew you were gonna ask that question, and I'm so sorry, but the only thing my brain is willing to give me in response to that question is Wonderflonium. Do not bounce from. Um, <laughs> Neil Patrick Harris's musical. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. My the single Dr. Horrible single hung blog. Yeah. <laughs> J, right. JT's saving us. <laughs> JT, Adam Manny. Excellent. Adam Manny, no, that's it. Yeah, my brain is just wasn't like, vibranium. Nope, it's wonder it's I <laughs> like I knew it was not wonderflonium. I but just the only thing my brain could offer me in that moment was wonderflonium. Do not bounce. Excellent. Thank you, Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> NJT for the actual answer. NJT. <laughs> <laughs> um. Excellent. No, I was, I was, I, it was like, it's not on a stadium, it's not vibranium. Now I'm gonna wonder if adamantium is adamantium a real metal, a real alloy, or is it a fictional alloy? Isn't it the same thing that Captain America's shield's made out of too? No, Aren't his shield's made, made out of vibranium. Vibranium? I thought they were made out of the same yeah. metal for some reason. No, I think uh, like adamantium. I think adamantium, like mentioned it. Like 40k law at some point. Now I want to know the difference no, in those metals. Myself. Yeah. Mm. The difference might just be um, the uh, copyright. Like who owns the copyright for the difference? That's fair. <laughs> okay. Hand painted. Huzzah. Oh. Hello, Ashlyn. You can be oh, late to the hey, game. We don't care if people are late. <laughs> no. But here it's quite early. Yeah. Early in the future. It is, uh, uh, well, it's actually uh, 11.46 a.m. On Friday. You're all gonna have oh, a wonderful it's... Friday morning. That's what I can oh, say. Oh good, I'm glad. <laughs> If you haven't already. There are so many snakes on this. Yep. There are. <laughs> That's okay. It gives me something to paint for the entire show. <laughs> <laughs> paint them all. Are you painting them black first or? Um, no, this is a very, very dark blue. And then I have, I don't oh, know if okay. you can see that one there, but I have a very lighter blue and I'm strategically doing some highlights on it to make them look kind of shiny. Like they're all newly right. shed. Um, or maybe cool. I'll do some, some light texturing on them or something and do like diamond pattern. I don't know. I'll decide okay. then. I'll try it. I'll see what I like. And then if I don't like it, I will paint over it with this very dark green blue <laughs> nice that's good oh um Ooh, Ashton says had a blizzard we didn't have any snow right. we were promised snow and they were liars <laughs> excellent uh, oh Jakey says uh, where adamantium is not real there is another developed alloy that is considered to be as strong. That's cool. Ooh. Definitely. Still not sure I'm going to have my bones replaced with it, but... 
I would probably think about I'd, I'd, it. Gonna say. I'd consider would, it, yeah. Think... If somebody offered. Maybe not all at once. Maybe I would try with just some of the bones. Just some of the right. bones. <laughs> the ones most prone to breaking? The bones most prone to breaking. The, long, the bones... Like the um, the bones most prone to arthritis in my case. Oh, okay. Yes. That would be a good plan. I think I'm going to go through and paint almost everything else in the sky brown. Got lots of feathers and birds. And, uh, there we go. Yeah, lots of feathers and birds and stuff. So, fortunately, I have a few different uh, highlight colors. To a bigger brush. Get those. I mean, the way to go. Uh, it's going well. Um, oh, Sean is asking where the lizard was. We can find out where Ashland lives. Lizard territory. <laughs> I'm going to guess in North Florida. Anybody else want to join me in that? <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. But I think um, James also had some information for us in the chat. Uh, two on the list of the most deadly, the, the large relative of the Cobra in Australia, the Coastal Taipan. Oh. That's a bad one. Uh, produce, the Coastal Taipan produces venom that is nearly identical to that of its inland cousin. But its bite is lethal in more than 80% of untreated cases. That's, uh, that's pretty fierce. Ooh. And that, my friends, is why. And for its all sakes, as if they were the coastal thing. Yes. I can't hear the owner anymore. Oh no! No, it's okay. I had myself muted, but you hear me like slightly through Gretchen's um, mic. No, it was more that oh. I noticed two people in the chat. It's definitely just um, what's it called? Like spam. And I and I. Oh so right. Like. At first, I was like, oh, I don't know what that is. I'm not going to talk about it. And then, like, I saw another person have the exact same. Oh, no. Comment, oh, exact so, same post. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, Good stuff. Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah, I can just remove them. Cool. From Restream. It's, it's mm -hmm. quite nice. So. Cool. That's good. Yeah, that snake. There we go. That guy was looking pretty good, Gretchen. Yeah. And by pretty good, I mean very yeah. good. <laughs> Just like my snake that I had as a pet named Sonny. Yeah, he's looking nice. My dear old friend. The pet of pets. He was actually a pretty good pet because he wasn't loud. He wasn't super expensive. Uh, like, the startup costs for reptiles are pretty expensive. But, like, once you have all the startup and everything, um, his, his care right. and keeping costs weren't bad. Uh, he wasn't loud. He didn't stink. Like, he was just there. Right. Just hang out. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I actually went and visited a friend on the weekend. Uh, and he is uh, probably about... I think three or four years ago, I uh, took up a hobby of um, birds. So he has a uh, little aviary out the back of his house. And 
Oh, that's nice. Uh, Rosellas and Rodrigas and Finch, grass parrots, and uh, quail. Oh, I have a friend who owns quail. Yeah? Uh, she's actually, she oh, owns them. Should I just say quail then instead of quails? Is quail the plural? Um, from what I know, quail is the plural of quail. Okay. I think. I'm pretty so sure you have like one, moose, one quail. Like moose quail. and moose. And, yeah. Okay. And I fish. Think. Fish, and two fish. fish. <laughs> Red fish, blue fish. Okay. Cool. In that case, he has quail. That's cool. Apparently, Multiple quail are very hard to keep. Yeah. They like to die. I Apparently think you. They... Um, yeah, I think you've got to be. Um, you can't have. I think you were saying you can't have uh, boys from different family groups. They will fight each other. But you have boys from the same family group together, then they're okay. Yeah, you have to introduce them slow if they're from separate family groups. Right. But no, he had the. When I got there, he was like, okay, well, tomorrow we've got to uh, take some of these quails. We have like nine. Right. Very happy to take these quail um, to uh, the pet shop because his little pet shop will buy a quail from him. That's really so cool. He, yeah, they're used as um, feeder birds for a lot of things, sometimes for humans. Um, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, these ones were tiny, so <laughs> they were tiny birds. But, uh, yeah, yes, I didn't even think that they would be then used as, like, I guess, hawk bait or. Yep. Falconry. That's what my friend uses them Falconry for. Falconry purposes. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, radio. Uh, there we go. Uh, but also, well, you can breed them for their eggs, and um, you can, they're ready for um, if for human consumption at around, I think, eight weeks old. They're at maturity for that, if you want to okay. have, like... Quail imagine, for Christmas? Yeah, I imagine they taste similar to like Cornish hens or something, you know. Like they're not large, yeah. so they're like individual. Yeah. But you probably need to eat them the same way the hound eats chickens. <laughs> and spit out the bones. But yeah, it, it was fun watching him run around the Avery. And he catch one and goes, oh no, that's JJ. I'm going to put it back. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, it was uh, fun to see his other birds as well. There's your budgery, budgery guys. We had Rosella. The Roselle looked a lot like the one that I took photos of, or the ones I took photos of last time. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, with the uh, the red and the blue and the green and yellow. Very bright. I like birds. They're very noisy, though. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely are. And it's definitely a, it, there seems to be quite a lot that we go into uh, making sure that they're all sort of doing well. And they're all well fed and watered. And that kind of thing. So. He did say there was, there was one time he, <laughs> on the, he brought a uh, like a large pot of plant into the aviary to have um, to sort of run around, have something extra to play with, kind of thing. Uh, but there was a lot of uh, grass in the, in the pot. It had been sitting outside, grass you know, had a bit of tall grass around the bottom of it. So he took that into the, the aviary. 
and then the next day, uh, one of the birds uh, dead on the ground. Oh no! And he was like, "What's going on? Has this been attacked by some of the other the birds?" Good. And then the next day, there was a second uh, fatality. But uh, they discovered that there had been a, a like a rat hiding in the grass. In the pot. Oh. So he was actually responsible. For taking it into the behavior. Oh Terrible. no! Have you ever done that again? He's like, nope, nope. Check every time. Just uh, an interesting thing to learn. Yeah, anytime you have any kind of prey animal as a pet. Uh, right. I think he called that spot line up with the, the Trojan horse. <laughs> There. All good. I mean, come off. <laughs> oh, you can see that. Strong Gleason said they make anti venom from horses. They do. Uh, there's, I forget wow. what. I didn't um, know that. I forget what anti-venom it is, but there was a specific um, horse that gained recognition because he was one of the only horses that had something about his genetic makeup was made him one of the only horses available to make anti-venom for a certain snake. And okay. for a while, he was like the only horse in the world that could um, do that. <laughs> Wow. And it was like a big deal when he passed away. They were like, oh, no, because they had been they didn't know if like his offspring were going to be able to have the same. The same effects or not. OK. That's crazy. I did not know that. Research that a little bit more. That's crazy. Thanks for that one, Joe. The last snakes up top. Then we're good. Look at that. Oh, we got snakes. Yeah, that looks good. Excellent. And then we'll snakes go and we'll highlight, highlight some of the snakes. So for our uh, mini, uh, fo mini photos, um, oh, yeah. I, made a, I made a post in the group asking people to share their favorite 2021 um, miniature that they painted. Okay. So, uh, they're not necessarily recent projects, but and some of them we have seen before. But I thought it would be fun to kind of take a look at people's favorite uh, miniature. Yeah, that sounds like a great That's idea. That's cool. Um, there's quite a few of them, so we can either do them all. So you're saying now. Shit well, we can either do them all now, or we can save some for a little later. Okay. Let's look at uh, some minis. Check out. Check out your freshly, well, your favorite minis of 2021. And because of ah! the way that I know, right? <laughs> uh, so I just don't always, most of them didn't have the miniature name that came along. With okay. Just we can the name them. The post, so. This one's Fred. This one's Fred. If you don't provide a miniature name, a name will be provided for you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So I was going to say Jeff, but I'll say Jeff. You can name the next one. No, this was... Okay, cool. You get to name all the dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. No, I think um, yeah, this one looks uh, looks very cool. Uh, I'm liking the uh, sort of the enhancement of the texture of the skin by the. Uh, Dry brushing that. Really good. And as with any good zombie, uh, zombie dinosaur, having that sort of fresh uh, red uh, torn flesh around the wounds is, uh, is always a good way to go. But now uh, looking very cool. I like the basic too. Throwing in some uh, a little bit of light. And, uh, I have a feeling that behind the back there, there's a little uh, aquarium. Oh, yeah. 
Definitely cool. Nice work, Aga. Hey, yeah. <gasps> Andrew. Okay, what's this one's name? This one. And uh, well, I guess it's a it's a dragon. Is that kind of a dinosaur? Do you get the name of it? Can it? No, 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 no. It's your turn. Think fast. Okay, well, it's <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Uh, this is Jeff, the uh, the icy dragon. But no, this is looking very cool. I'm loving that uh, the green blue. Is uh, pink, blue, uh, everything. But yeah, looking great. Uh, and I love that uh, Andrew's treated each of the sort of textures a little bit differently. They got that, you know, the darker shadows down the the front, or what they keep those ridges picked down. Uh, that little bit of a, a uh, I guess, knobbly texture around the uh, shoulders and down the back there where it hits the spine. Uh, looking very cool. It's a great mini, too. I wonder where the mini's from. Yeah, it is. Wonderful. I like that it doesn't have wings. You don't often see any kind of dragon type miniature yep. without wings. And I, I, it's a breath of fresh air. It's fun. It is nice. Definitely. Yep, very cool work, Andrew. Looks great. Oh, art. Small. Easy. Ooh, that's fun. Have we seen that? I'm trying to think. Wait. Yeah, the, those big sort of horn yeah. blades inside of its head. It almost looks like that um, species of dragon would fight other dragons, like like how deer or something. Like you know what I mean? Oh, okay, right here. Yep. Uh, like the shape. So they uh, what's that called? Is that uh, is that a rock? Perhaps. Oh. Where they come together. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I have a feeling that it it would want to try and get underneath, head underneath other bones of its head, uh, so under their necks, so it could bring those blades around. Amazing. But no, um, I think Art's done a wonderful job here. That uh, red into the sort of coppery wing, looking great. And yeah, that goes gloss black horn. Um, very dangerous. Nice work, Art. Oh, and Josh says when you brought the elk with the dragon. Yep. Excellent. This is uh, Ashland's, uh, I think, Canada's. I think I'm wrong. Correct me in the chat. Uh, but yeah, looking, looking very cool. I think we've really enjoyed seeing uh, Ashton's work with the uh, blue armor and uh, throwing those, that little pop of orange in the hair. But uh, it looks great. Very nice. But I love that. Uh, I love that little crossbow uh, that she's wielding in her right hand. There. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Glad that you're great with me. Good work. Oh, I think one from uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. What's this one going to be called? Ooh, that one's cool. I like the yellow. Yep. What do you think that'll be? What's the name for this one? Mm, Hamlet. Hamlet? Okay. Hamlet. Radio. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Excellent. But no, I think... Um, I love this because of the uh, the sort of amount of contrast through there. So all of the um, the understructure is that very dark um, black blue metallic kind of feel, uh, and then those white panels uh, over it. That's like uh, with a more warm tinge to it, looking really good. Uh, and then yeah, that little V slash wasp kind of feel at the back there. But you know it's Angel World Rockets. Looks great, Betsy. Awesome work. Carl. I was doing this. I think we, we have seen this before, haven't we? Pretty sure it was. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I think she's looking great. I think this is um, a research film. Yeah. I could be wrong, but. Um, but no, looking very cool. I love the, uh, the, the, sort of the skin of the membrane. Sort of matches the color of her legs and her face because that's her. Um, you know, lots of fantastical elements that stuck to that. But no, looking, uh, looking really good there. And I love the uh, the use of that yellow as a spot color. 
down there. Break for what? I fell. Uh, Swamp Crawler Slugger, I think it's oh, called. Oh, yeah. I remember, didn't we have this one? on the show? We did. I think we saw think this. We as a, yep. Wasn't it a work in progress when we saw it? Was it a work in progress when we saw it? I think it might have it? been. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I think um, I really like what Chris has done with all of his um, crawl boys that work on those mushrooms. You know, incredibly bright, vibrant mushrooms. So you still wrote something. Um, with that saturation on the face of uh, a model that's quite desaturated. Um, so I was crawling through the slimy parts of the swamp that would be well hidden. Behind those unnatural, uh, perhaps magical mushrooms. Didn't finally notice it just by then. But yeah, I do love that uh, that kid that just you know, the slug off. But yeah, excellent work, Chris. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> in the chat, Sean said the name of Sue. So I think I'm not sure if that's that was for that That was for the dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so Daniel here has got a, a great. Uh, it looks like a um, kind of like a, a dark elf or a drow. Actually, uh, armored up raptor kind of thing. We got a lot of uh, lizard yes. lizard based. Uh, yeah, I think but, it's uh, no, looking very cool. Here. I think it's I think a it drow. drow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Maybe and, 2020... Uh, yeah, so I was going to yep. say, maybe um, 2021 was Year of the Lizard, apparently. Well, yeah. Right. <laughs> certain, certain things are just, you know, it's just how it is. <laughs> yep. What's 2022 going to be? Year of Year more of lizards. The, Year more of lizards. the Huntsman the Spider. <sighs> Be the Huntsman, Huntsman Spider. <laughs> definitely, definitely do that. Make that happen, people. Watch, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, yeah, no, I think Daniel's done a great job here, uh, connecting the the red on the armor plates with the um, the creature there, through the like the red on the blades. Um, great connection there. I think, um, right, that purplish red on the sham, sort of shoulder plate. Uh, that drow looks great. Excellent work, Daniel. Oh, oh, cool. Oh, wow. um, so, Raging Heroes are an Italian miniature company, and uh, over the last twelve months, maybe eighteen months, they've uh, been doing three D stuff as well. They have a three D store. Uh, well, I would say 3D, uh, digitally sculpted, and uh, three printable files. And the way they've presented them all, they've done a lot of uh, they've like Greek gods and um, Egyptian gods and Norse gods and that kind of thing. So generally, they'll present the the figure of the god itself in like a white alabaster or marble kind of field. Oh, that's cool. Like, but, yeah, yeah, definitely cool. And for the Greek, um, the Greek gods, it was. So it's that, and then blue for the any cloth, and then gold for any uh, other accessories. So I think Daniel uh, sort of followed that concept here with this model, uh, and it just looks fantastic. Because they, it's, when right here they were showing that, they were showing the renders, the digital renders. There wasn't, they weren't actually they just painted like that. But uh, yeah, so I'm hoping that that's, that's where Daniel got those ideas from. And it, uh, it, Comes out really nicely. Excellent work there, Daniel. That's super cool. Yep. Oh, this is from uh, from the Shoe Day Mall. Uh, Terminator Chaplin. I think this is from his uh, the Shadow Hawks. Might have been. But 
uh, yeah, this is one of the the newer um, classic albums. It looks absolutely fantastic. I think uh, they've done an excellent job there. Uh, they usually have black armor. Uh, this guy's one of black armor, but there he He has a lot of skull armor. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, Dan, we'll be back. Oh, no. Oh, no. he does have a lot of skulls. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. You, uh, yeah, it, it's it cut out just as you said. Skull. <laughs> so, yes. Well, it's a, it's a one of a miniature, so uh, it is legally required to have the first number of skulls. But, yeah. Excellent work there, David. Great. Oh, Denise has done this uh, an awesome demon prince of sorts. I don't know exactly where it's from, but yeah, it looks very cool. I love the, the uh, kind of those little little lines of almost like uh, lava. Like lava veins. Things. Yeah, love of that's, there you go. yeah, that's what it reminds right. me of. Yep. I love that. That's such a nice little tiny touch that makes him look very much. It gives him a sense of being alive. Kind of has yep. that like that call back to very like realistic kind of things that you'd see in nature, but it still keeps all the texture of something supernatural. Um, yep. Very cool. Yep. Very nice effect. I agree. It looks great. And um, I'm not sure how big it is, but it looks like uh, Denise has made the base out of a thin slice of uh, tree. Oh, yeah. The bark around the edge there. So just left left all the bark on the outside. and. That's so, such a good idea. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. You can get any you know, to, you can uh, get those little tree slices at like Michael's and Joanne's and stuff. Right. Okay. Yep. Hang in. Sounds like uh, sounds like a project. Craft stores. Craft store, hooray! Saving the um, day. Excellent. But no, great work there, Denise. It looks awesome. Uh, Ed. Oh, just now. Wait, I didn't. We didn't oh, hey! That's that cool. fun. I was yeah, it is super cool. The uh, the Disney like holiday special yesterday. <laughs> I watched them like decorate the park and everything, how they did it, like all their trees. Oh no, Dave, you're just indefinitely drinking orange juice. <laughs> it's okay. We can listen. Yep. You can keep going. I'm back now. Very good orange <laughs> juice. Good orange juice. Good orange juice break. Vitamin yep. C. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, I watched them how they decorate the park. Um, which was really cool. Um, oh, um, like Disney World? Yeah, they that? had like a little thing on uh, Hulu you could watch. Cool. And I was like, that's neat. That's excellent. It was, it was super cool. They're, um, and it really looked very expensive to go there for the holidays. <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> I think um, Ed's done a good job on this one. Uh, it's very cool. I'm not sure what the original color scheme is, but uh, that purple and green. I think that's a very uh, yellowish green in there, like lime green. I yeah. just think it looked Excellent. like it kept the cartoony vibe of it without being, it, it doesn't look silly. Like it looks like it belongs. Yeah. Yep. You mean like uh, Donald could actually join your local uh, ice hockey team. Yeah. I think Donald makes kind a of the uh, player. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the ice hockey version of uh, Space Jam. Oh my gosh. Well, you do, they have a Disney film about it. The Mighty Ducks. He could be on the Mighty Ducks Mighty team. Duck. Yeah. Yeah, this is true. Perfect. This is nice. <laughs> Headless Horseman. Yeah, this that is definitely awesome, effect. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That fire definitely uh, great. spectacular. And the the fun part, uh, I think the fun part is uh, they obviously normally when we look at miniatures, eyes drawn to the face. That's how it is. 
communicate with other people, we always look to their face. Uh, and so when you have the headless horseman, like, where do I look? But uh, in his photo, the, that jack lantern has been framed beautifully. And you can see out the dark there. But no, this looks, uh, this looks awesome. Yeah, that fire effect is really good. Uh, yeah, great work. I think, too, the photography choices to photograph this mini really help it stand out because by choosing to blur that little bit of the foreground with it, it yep. gives the feeling of heat on top of it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, definitely. I agree completely. Good work. Lovely mini. Oh, cool. I think we saw, um, I think we mentioned the work in progress for this one. I'm not sure. I think this is the Scorpex Destroyer Lord. Oh, uh, yeah. The Necron Rain. But, uh, yeah, now we see it in all its glory. There's, I love the, uh, the variety of metal tones across there. There's brighter silver, there's like darker steel. Um, there's that brassy kind of look as well and then when you put that uh some of those green glows from those areas a great uh, great yeah that is a, a lovely job there and some nice really nice edge, uh, edge highlighting as well on the sharper metal and very cool let's see the uh the whole army painted laid out Take a shot of that first. Very nice. Oh, oh, excellent. <laughs> Anyone named this bounty hunter? Anyone? Anyone? You're going to have to give this guy a name. He already has one. It is Dinga. <laughs> Dinga, the bounty hunter from. Uh, so he was in. Downey had a lineup in Empire Strikes Back. Pretty sure it doesn't have any lines. That's why. <laughs> I think uh, Gary's done a, a great job there with that, uh, that thing. It's, it's just really big. He's standing there and it's all sort of wrapped up in bandages. It's like a, a mummy with some armor plates on. But yeah, I think uh, Gary's done a great job there. Instantly recognizable for those of us who like scouring the background. Well done. <laughs> Let's go. Nice work. Oh, Graham. Some Graham for a little while. Uh, yeah, beautiful work, Graham. I love this. Uh, I think it's the um, Primaris Lieutenant. He was saying Perhaps. this is his first um, Warhammer miniature. Oh, oh okay. that's fun. Cool. Excellent. Yeah, it'd probably be a little bit different. I think Graham usually paints uh, sort of board game minis or role playing minis. So yes. uh, yeah, this would probably be a, like a slightly larger canvas for him. Uh, he's done a great job. I love the little um, sort of the little glow slash texture lines on the um, the sword there, in particular. But yeah, very nice work, Graham. Looks great. Oh, from Bailey. Painted up uh, Ikirikyo. Got some uh, clone troopers in the background there as well. I was say, I love how this is set up because it just looks like all the clone troopers are like, ha We got you. <laughs> CP3 is like, just like, hello, what? <laughs> what? What's going on? Uh, and I do like that uh, Jason's painted that lower leg, the lower right leg. Uh, Oh, yeah. That looks... I didn't even notice that at first. I was all caught up with looking at all the background stormtroopers. <laughs> there we go. So, funny story. Uh, before, the, before the internet goes out again, I'm really sorry. About this. Uh, but uh, as I was looking through some uh, stuff, uh, at the bottom of the, the box, there was 
a just a single leg from an action figure. And it was a C three PO leg. I recognized it instantly. And I was like, I bet you this is from the uh, the C three PO that came apart. The miniature that or the action figure that came apart. To sort of represent him during that scene in uh, Empire Strikes Back, where he's all in pieces and in a net, back and back. So uh, when I spoke to my my daughters, I said, "Go and check the uh, go check the box. It's got the Star Wars figures in it. And see if C three PO has both legs." And of course, there's one figure that had both legs, and then the other one. Was like, no, there's only one leg for it. Uh, like that. <laughs> so, thankfully, I'll be able to re- reunite those legs. But uh, no, I think Jason's done a great job here um, with those color choices there. And, uh, you can see those little, those like different colored wires uh, belly there. Excellent. Great attention to detail. Nice work, Jason. Jason Sutton's done an awesome job here with that uh, with this, uh, rider, this mounted rider. She looks, uh, she looks fantastic. I'm loving that green armor on the horse. Because normally you'd expect to see something, but no, uh, you'd expect to see like brown leather or black leather or perhaps some sort of metal, but uh, metal barding. But that barding is uh, the green leather barding looks fantastic. Awesome job, Jason. The, uh, I will say that the uh, the Steve was a little bit scared. You know that white right <laughs> there. So is it scared or is it uh, supernatural or some kind? But um, again, excellent work. Love it. Oh, cool. Yep, I remember uh, we looked at these earlier in the year. Oh yeah. But I can't remember what game they were from. What game are they from? You remember, Leona? Oh, oh, oh yes. Um, they're from Munchkin game. Yeah. Uh, Steve Jackson. I recognize the art now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the art is by a specific guy who I'm going to forget his name, but the game yep. is Steve Jackson. Sorry, and it's the Munchkin yep. game. Okay, cool. No, that was, um, I think Jeff did a great job on these. He kept that sort of cartoony feel. Uh, but yeah, we gave them some time. I love that fire. I painted that fire brilliantly. Yep, awesome work, Jeff. Glad to see those again. Very cool. Ooh. Yep. I remember when we saw this, JT. Those tattoos still look uh, amazing. They do, don't they? Yeah. Particularly on that, uh, the right shoulder. The the back shoulder. Great. I love the, uh, the different, um, metals, like the, all of that sort of knot work on the the metal plates. Showing that in that brass. Love it, well, JT. Awesome. Well done. Let's see why I said favorite. <laughs> um, and oh. this will be this will be the last mini for now. For now, okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I think uh, yeah. He, he's done a great job here as well. Oh, that's uh, yeah. The highlights on that beard. Yeah. Yep. They look great. Uh, but I was going to say that I, I love the um, sort of the extra tonality under that skin. I think because this is a, a bus, like the larger bus, we can do a bit more work with it. Seeing some of those that sort of hints of blue and gray, uh, green, sort of under the under the flesh there, and particularly around the eyes, um, so that lovely uh, sort of red, sort of purple, sort of pushing around there, give it that. Weary kind of look. But, uh, yeah, it's a great job. Very nice. 
It looks like you got a little, little tiny tattoo, an old tattoo as far as that. It's fading away. But no. Excellent work, Keith. Work, Keith. Great. Here we go. Back to the mini. And we're uh -huh. back. Back to the Back to these minis. I got, I got my little, my tiny little shine marks. Tiny little shine. Now my snakes are shiny now. They are all freshly, these are freshly peeled snakes. Fresh Ew. from their skins. <laughs> Fresh from their skins. Um, and... I just barely there have the hat. Am I, am I? Nope, that's not the right way. This way. Are you just going to paint that gold? Um, I don't know if I have gold, uh, like, on me, like an actual metallic gold. I know I have bronze for sure. And, oh, okay. Uh, so, oh, I do have gold. Haha, -ha, polished gold. It was there. Excellent. So, yes, it will be gold. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's cool. I think it'll definitely look good. It's a, a nice bright gold. Very, um, very artifacty. Yep. It feels kind of kind of funny to not be the person rummaging in the um in the box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the rummager now. <laughs> You are the rummager. <laughs> rummager. <laughs> Just shiny snakes. Why does it have to be shiny snakes shimmering? <laughs> Excellent. Because they're all they're all fresh and tidy. They're fresh from their their sheddings. <laughs> of course, on the um, uh, little section you build next to that base, you want to see all the shed. Just, they all shed all at once. It was shedding. Crunch, crunch, crunch. All at once. <laughs> What's that crunching sound? Great. Yeah. What are they, uh, so are they now the equivalent of like the soft shell crab? <laughs> no. No? Okay. That's not how it works? No. Okay. That would be really weird because they're already soft. How much softer yeah. could they get, Dave? I don't know. I don't know. Oh no, I got tan on my rock. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I can make and correct that later. I can. That's my motto for this wee little part right here is I can correct it all later. As long as I get it on the gray bit and not on my snake that I spent hours on. <laughs> blending a translucent -y belly. Um, this the belly bit does look right, very cool. Right? This bit right here is what is blocking my eye line. Yep. Yeah, so the, the hat and the, uh, the whip and the eye will have the easiest thing to play with. Yeah, I would definitely say that um, if I would have known they were hiding there, I would have painted them first to absolutely avoid <laughs> having to carefully paint around them. Um, yeah. Thankfully, so I think, though. Um, oh, thankfully, though. Right, you were gonna say? Oh no! Go ahead. Oh, okay. I was gonna say. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to paint his hair white. Ooh, that's an interesting choice. Just, uh, yeah, I just think it'll be yeah. a nice. Um, gonna stand out from the. Well, uh, we, sort of those natural. We need more older orcs. Okay. Why do we never see older orcs? <laughs> the only. Uh, I'm going to put it down to adventurers. 
<laughs> like well, a you need. Or like a you need to make your orc a silver fox. Make him. He's survived. Yeah. Scariest thing you he's can see. Great, he has great orc. sideburns. He uh, does. There we go. Those chops are like right up there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they are awesome. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. It's the white hair. Uh, That'd be neat. So um, I haven't. I haven't watched television at all. Okay, <laughs> Dave's gonna. <laughs> I have so, been watching lots of television. Do you want to, do you want to fill me <laughs> yeah. in on some of the fun television? <laughs> so I was telling Dave before the show um, that I watched, after the Disney special, um, it instantaneously went in to this other special, you can find it on Hulu, um, called Boy Band Holiday. And I wasn't a big, like, super big in sync backstreet boy like person but I, it was a integral part of my childhood because that's like when that was just insane levels of like fandom for those boy bands I think anyone who looks back at the 90s even if you didn't particularly enjoy NSYNC's music or Backstreet Boys or any of that like it was still there like culturally it was a big deal and um, so basically, Joey Fatone and um, a bunch of other members of different boy bands from back in the 90s put a holiday special together, except it's basically everyone who did not go solo. Just they just <laughs> came together and it is brilliant. Not in that it is something particularly I won't say it's not entertaining because I watched it in its entirety <laughs> but the dad energy that is in that room <laughs> is phenomenal it is like my husband came to see what i was watching did not recognize a single one and was just like he was like what is this and i was like it's a bunch of dads it's a <laughs> he didn't even question me <laughs> he was like you're like you would watch a very dad christmas <laughs> and they just <laughs> but like they're making dad jokes they're talking about their children like it was just sometimes sometimes a holiday special can just be 10 dads in a room singing to you yeah sometimes that's all you need <laughs> so did they actually they actually sang did they sing they did they did sing and they sang well they harmonized like on point you would not have even known time has, had passed um, right. I met Joey once. I love Joey Fatone. Um, I I did not actually. I was telling Dave before the before the show. I wasn't a super huge like In Sync fan. Like I wouldn't want to meet him and be like, oh my god, In Sync. I want to meet him for the dad he is now. I like. I just want to. <laughs> he see he. Everyone else on that holiday special was just kind of like, not as into it. But Joey Fatone was into it. He was having a blast, and it was contagious. It was amazing. Um, like, everyone else would... <laughs> there were certain times where I was very positive the eye rolls of his dad jokes were not scripted. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> like, there were times where the annoyance in the voice, I was like, man, that doesn't even sound like, like fake like ribbon sarcasm that sounded a little real <laughs> um, <laughs> but he like he was having a blast and I was telling Dave I was like I want him on the show because this man every time I have seen him post in sync it's been something to the like just fun like he was in yep. and here's here's why I told Dave he could be on the show and we could this is why I wanted, this is my pitch to Game Trade Media to reach out to Joey Fatone, <laughs> is that here's, here's why I think he would agree for little to no cost. And that is because Joey Fatone was in a beautiful classic hit um, horror movie, uh, Creature Feature, that was called Jersey Shore Shark Attack. And he was in that film. And... <laughs> 
I don't know if any of you have seen Jersey Shore Shark Attack, but it came out around the same time as um, Sharknado. And Sharknado got all of this attention. And so Jersey Shore Shark Attack just, you know, people forgot about it. It just didn't get there. But they it should have because it was just that much of a classic in the making. And Joey, <laughs> Joe Fatone was in it. And I think... I think that because he was in that and because I was in Bloody Summer Camp, I think we could get him on the show. I think that, that <laughs> that's a realistic expectations. I don't... Okay, everybody in, everybody in the chat who thinks that maybe... <laughs> I'm going to reach uh, out. <laughs> that we, could, we should get Joey Fatone on the show to paint some minis. I think we should. I think we could. I think yep. that we'd have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Um, we, we would. We would. <laughs> JT says, do it. Yeah. See, I think this plan would work out much better than my plan to get Henry Cavall on the show, even though he paints Warhammer minis, and I think that his PR person would find it charming <laughs> if he painted with us. I think so. That would be great. I need, to, I need to find out who all of these producers are so I can just be like, Hello? Well, really, it would be what Leona writing a letter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if that's we're, how if we're go. going down official routes. <laughs> but yeah. I, I have high hopes for Joey. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying that we have both been in similar styled horror films before. So I just we've both been in indie movies. That's that's a bond. That is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've not Fantastic. been in a boy band, but we can make it work. I just, I think he would just be That'd such be a great. fun guy. He seems so fun. I never, I was like six or seven when NSYNC was like super big. And then like, um, I think the height of it was when I was like 10 or 11. So I never had the whole like, oh my God, I'm crushing on NSYNC thing. I was just like music. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, as an I, adult. I do have to ask with yeah, so I was going to say, I just asked, was, 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 was uh, Donnie Wahlberg on the show? Um, What band was he in? Uh, he was in, I think he was in Backstreet Boys. No, there were no Backstreet, there were no Backstreet Boys. They talked about the Backstreet oh. Boys. There were no Backstreet Boys in this, there was, okay. um... There is Joey, there is Chris, there is a like a zoom in telephone FaceTime from Lance. And then there was Lance Bass. <laughs> he has a new baby. He Lance had there. he had the new baby on the on the video call. There was one kid from the block. There was not the whole new kids from the block. There was a singular kid sorry, on the block. Right. No, sorry, Donnie was Donnie was the new kids on the block. <laughs> My it bad. could have been. Was he? Is he the one with very curly blonde hair? Kind of short. No, Donny Wahlberg. No, no. no. He, Donny Wahlberg's um, Marky Mark's brother. I don't know. Um, but I, I, I really only particularly know Donny Wahlberg um, band of brothers. There was there is a few band there's a few boy bands represented on this production that um, were like half a generation before I was alive enough to understand what a boy band was. And unfortunately, New Kids on the Block was part of that. Is in that sphere? Right. Yeah. If, if they started in the 80s, then I was not alive enough to recognize them. 98 Degrees was, and they had, um, they had three of the four members of 98 Degrees on the, on the special. So 90 Degrees was like, and they actually seemed kind of happy to be there. A little tired, but kind of happy. <laughs> right. Um, Boys to Men, two of the members from Boys to Men. Um, and two of the members from, oh, what is the band? It's the band that Boys to Men took one of their, um, one of the songs to make their, their title. Um, but again, falls into that category of like, half a generation to a generation before me where I don't know enough. Right. 
Because, okay. like, Boys to Men and New Kids on the Block in O-Town, I was able to be like, I recognize this as things that exist. Um, but, uh, yeah, that holiday special is on Hulu. If you are feeling like you, you want to spend quality times with ten dads of your choice, all different flavors of dad, they have all Or, or not your choice. Dad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're already they're they're already chosen. The pre-chosen yes. for you. You don't even have to think about if, it. Now. It's a value pack. It's a value pack of dads. And if you want to <laughs> spend a good time buy, hanging buy out two, with them, buy two get eight free. <laughs> yeah, and if you want to feel if you want to feel like you have aged ten years and have a good time, then okay. you should watch this holiday special and. Pay attention to all of the super fun quippy dad jokes of Joey Fatone. It's, yeah. Doesn't that sound like a blast? Yeah. Just a bunch of dads it, being pals. Oh, and there's one Spice Girl who makes an appearance. Exactly one. But I won't spoil it for you. Oh. <laughs> we have to go and find out who it, who it is? Yeah. yeah. A singular right. Spice. There is there is a, a right. Spice. Mm. Um, I know who I'm hoping it is. <laughs> uh, we'll find out later. Well, Baby Spice, I will say it's not Baby Spice because she's busy working on the great American Bake Off. She is a host on that. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. She, she, she and some football player who whose last name is Spice, I think, which I thought was really funny. They got like two Spice at a uh, baking show. I was like, that's clever. Good job. Excellent. I wonder how long that uh, that medium ran. <laughs> oh, we had all the spices. Uh, Josh, but I can't believe the 90s were 30 years ago. I know. And not actually yep. more than 30 years ago, technically, because I was not born in 1990. <laughs> yep. If you'd like to feel older. There we go. <laughs> Great. Thanks, oh, Gretchen. It's fine. <laughs> My husband came join me, and then when I explained that they weren't, I mean, they are dads, but that they weren't just, like, yep. random dads. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh yeah, that's, that's in sync, and that's 98 degrees. Um, he was like, why do they have a gray in their hair? <laughs> I was like, because they were probably that was ages ago. <laughs> Time yep. is constant. <laughs> Yes. He looked at him and say, one day you will. He already has gray in his hair. <laughs> Not his beard, but in his hair. Right. <laughs> oh, right. I could actually, um, no, let me paint the artifact gold. No, it's like, okay. Sorry. I, didn't I got excited about a bunch of dads decorating a Christmas tree and telling jokes. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> That's quality entertainment. And everyone it should go indeed. get some eggnog and enjoy that if that's their thing. Um, cool. You won't feel old as in like old. You'll just feel confused and entertained. As if you are old. <laughs> And you'll be extra excited to be like, yes, Joey Fatone should be on Painting Happy Little Minis. Let's all find, let's all send letters to him. Like, imagine if he got six fan letters all telling him that he should be on our show. I feel like that would be enough. I feel like... Six? Yeah, I feel like six is that's, that's his threshold? It used to be 12. <laughs> now he's down to the half dozen. Yeah, I, just, I feel like it would be cool. Yeah, I, think you I just right. feel like this. He has such good vibes on this show. I just feel like he would be be fun to <laughs> hang out with. Excellent. Okay, so uh, at some stage during this week, uh, Gretchen's going to find out the address to mail those uh, letters. To. <laughs> it's going to be like and Dear Santa, except it's going to be Dear Joey <laughs> from Insane. <Dear> Joey. <laughs> Uh, Sean, we should try to get Henry to go, Cavill. Right? Listen, Sean, I want to get Henry Cavill on this show so bad, and not in a like a fangirly way, but just in a he paints Warhammer minis, and it makes sense yeah. way. 
Um, but I don't know how to get in touch with him. <laughs> if you do, please yeah. reach out. <laughs> um, please let us know. Yeah, if you can figure out who his agent is so I could send them a well-intentioned letter, a very professional letter. Um, <laughs> be like, we're not weird. We're just mm. odd. Well, we, and, <laughs> we are, but... But in a really creepy. good way. In a way that's good for PR. Okay? And... <laughs> <laughs> And he can zoom in. He doesn't even have to come in person to our studio. We have the technology. He could zoom in yep. on a day of his choice. We could pre-film the program if we needed to. But it would be cooler yep. in person. Could you imagine that? And we already know that <laughs> we already know that he has the minis and the paint. Yeah, he does. <laughs> so like it's True. really what is it but an afternoon to him? Yep. You know? And we are not exactly. well known or well broadcasted, so really it would just be him awkwardly <laughs> here expecting there to be hundreds of people, and instead it would be us with like our 40 peop regulars just being like, hey Henry, <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite Warhammer? <laughs> we should definitely do that. Yeah, right. it'd be perfect. I hope Leona is Googling Henry Cavill's agent right now. Sean has got maybe an Instagram poll. Would that get his attention? I don't know Possibly. how these things work. Well, the only I think person... We need to, I think we need to let the... I think we need to let the current um, sort of hoopla die down a little bit. Because I'm sure oh, he's yeah. getting tagged in a lot of posts. So... Let that die down and then... Be like, hey, Henry. Uh, yeah, the only, like, celebrities that I've ever managed to, like, be like, hey, time of day, respond, is I, Mark Hamill will like my tweets occasionally, and I'll be like, yeah, good job, Mark. <laughs> Though it's probably just his, like, assistant, it's probably just his assistant scrolling down being like, boop, the, the masses need yeah. me, like, um... And Nicole Byer, because I once complained that I wasn't famous enough to be a guest judge on Nailed It, but I'm a good baker, so I also cannot be a contestant on Nailed It. <laughs> and I was right. like, fix this. And she laughed at me. Excellent. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's the best Ooh. I can offer. <laughs> If we advertise it, we'd have our best viewership ever. We would. That would be terrifying. Yeah, it would be. It would be. The I'd be like, oh my god. So it would. Oh, wait, we wouldn't be able to read anything. I'd be like, oh my god, I should have worn my glasses. Ah, I, I, I couldn't <laughs> possibly. I couldn't possibly imagine yeah. how many people that would be. If we ever cracked like 200, 300 people at the same time, like watching this, I think. Like, I would just be like, I don't understand. <laughs> Your brain would melt. Well, I understand I watching the know. news, but, but I would just, like, I wouldn't be able to comprehend people, like, watching. I'd be like, hi. Oh. Excellent. <laughs> uh, uh, according to the Googles, it costs between 100 and 200K to book Henry Cavill for oh. events. At least he has a price tag. At least it's out there. It's a goal. Let's get the car washes started and the... Um, Thank you, JT, for that. The go, the, the, we can... The GoFundMe. <laughs> some bake sales. We can... <laughs> well, apparently apparently you, you bake well, so... I do. I do <laughs> bake well. Not <laughs> well enough to be... Too well to be on Nailed It, so... I bake too well to be on Nailed It. Um... That's all good. All good. I need, you know, what we need to do. I just need to go to a convention that he's at, and I need to go as like one of the interviewing people, and then we can just, we'll just use bardic yep. inspiration, and we'll just be like, yeah, 
I'm here interviewing people. By the way, I heard you like minis. <laughs> yeah. Tell us more about your minis. <laughs> That's how you get them. That's what yep. the interviewers don't know. Special secret trick. <laughs> Tell me more about your minis. Go deep geek on him. I bet you Rather he doesn't being... get that question all the time. Normally. I bet you everyone's like, no, tell us about Superman. And I'll be like, no, Henry. Tell me about Warhammer. When's the last time yep. you were able to go play some tabletop? <laughs> and that's, that's how we get them. <laughs> we just leave a trail. We leave a trail of minis. We leave a trail of minis leading yep. to a box with a stick under it. <laughs> It'll work. Classic cartoon styley. <laughs> Are you sure you weren't Wiley Coyote? You weren't a Wiley Coyote in the uh, in a former <laughs> life. I might have been. I like shenanigans a little yep. too much. Um, I have high dreams yes, and Tracy aspirations. Says, uh, Tell me about your custodies army. That would be the question to ask. Also, he built his own computer, and I feel like that's another nerd snipe that not a lot of people talk to him about. Everyone wants to know about his muscles. I'm going to get in there and be like, hey, I, I know nothing about computers. That's why I got to bring my husband. We got a tag team. <laughs> right. Because he has all the computer knowledge. I'll be like, hey. I have a list of questions here about computers. <laughs> yep. I think you just go for like, a, are you an air cooled, water cooled? What's what's your uh, what's your personal? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's that? That's a good one. So, um, I think it'll work out brilliantly. See, we'll just we'll start small with Joey Fatone, and then we'll work our way up. Yeah. 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 Once we get Joey in, we'll be like Joey. Who's that? <laughs> Here's some Warhammer and, minis. <laughs> Go for, get a new for a hobby. Second there, for a second there, I just had this impression. I don't know if you've seen. Um, there's a sh a show, like a, a reality show. There's a couple of guys in um, in California. They they do they trade. So they have a um, they have a business like a pawn shop business. But uh, what they do is they'll they'll take something. Uh, that might have like four hundred dollars value, and they'll go and trade it <gasps> for something that is like eight hundred dollars value, really and then they'll idea. take that and they trade it for like sixteen hundred dollars, and they work their way up. And it's like you know this what is we could we do though a laptop into a car. What we should do? We should start with a mini on the show, and we should take a mini, and we should start a trading thing to keep trading it up until eventually getting Henry Cavill on the show. <laughs> well, that's that's what I thought you were like, referring to. Like, we we'll, we'll oh, get Joey, Joey and, just... then, and say, "Who can we offer Joey to 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 switch oh, for no. somebody of like a higher value?" When they just work our way up that way. That's what I thought you were going for. No, I would not trade Joey Fatone. I respect him as a human. <laughs> he's fun. I just think he's I'm just like so just, we're just trading like an hour of his time or two hours of his time, <laughs> but. Sure. Thanks we'll for making me the bad him. guy in that scenario. <laughs> It'll work. It'll be fine. It's. Okay. You know, I feel. I feel like we could really. I have lots of people who I would just want on the show who don't even paint minis. Probably. I feel like Jeff Goldblum would be a treat. <laughs> he would. Absolutely. I just, I just want you to imagine, like, just handing him a miniature and some paints and just not telling him anything about it. Just letting him experience. Yep. I think. And only asking him questions about dinosaurs <laughs> would be the way to go there. <laughs> or insects. <laughs> yes. So um, <laughs> we're rapidly coming to the close of the show. Let me see where my mini we is at. We are. And I'm finished with, right. with mine. It's huge. Yeah. No, I, I'm not finished yet. I've got, still got a bit to do. I've got all the metallics to do. I've got some work around the that chest on his back. Um, the leather uh, sort of skirt that he has there is all um, studded leather. Mm -hmm. To uh, make 
the studs, kind of finish off the, the shoelaces, the boot laces. And uh, yeah, when I get to that sword, I'm going to try and do a little bit of um, throw some little green reflective parts. You know, a bit of the sword under there. So that should be interesting. Um, yeah, for the fun. So I'll try and have him done for when I'm next to the studio. Sweet. I'll probably I'll take the photos and pop them up on the group. But next week, next week, I will not be here. Either on the show or in this seat. That is the seat that I will be in will look um, much more like an airplane. <laughs> so, will, it, will it not be an airplane seat? We don't know. We. <laughs> it, it, it will be. It, it will look exactly like one because it will be one. And I will uh, currently be, I will be flying back over the Pacific Ocean on my way back to America. So who? What, what's happening next week? Next oh, week, sorry, strictly as well. Sorry, Sean says maybe Will Wheaton. Oh, he would probably do it. Yeah. <laughs> See, we need to, Leona. Okay. We gotta get it together. We gotta think gotta big. Yeah. We gotta That's think big, big, and we gotta be annoying. <laughs> 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 new year, new, nice. new new year, new painters. Yeah. Yep. Um. Excellent. But uh, yes, so I won't be here next week. Who will be here in my place? I don't know. That's a mystery. We have, um, it says on the paper, you will. It's on the paper. Um, it's on your cheat I sheet. I have a cheat sheet. <laughs> it will be. So yeah, next week it'll be Gretchen and then also Jeff Hall. It'll be Jeff Hall. There, I read Jeff. that. Not in the right timing. But <laughs> Jeff Hall has collaborated with Dave, on, or is collaborating with Dave on um, a dungeon project, right? A book. A book? book? Yeah, we're, um, so we, a book. So we have a new, I, I wore my army sleeves and board shirt. Woo! So if people are looking for a um, for a gift for their uh, their friendly local uh, miniature maker, check out my book, Army Sleeves and Board. It's available at your local gaming store through Alliance um, Game Distributors. So you can check that out. Uh, and, um, yeah, I'm working on a book with Jeff called uh, Messrs. Hall and Taylor present The Tremendous Tome of Decorating Dungeons. So it's all about uh, painting dungeons and uh, dungeon scenery pieces and building huge dungeons and that kind of thing. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, so John and we have to take on... that Kickstarter next February. Awesome. That's great. And hope maybe he can even talk a little bit more, you know, highlight the project a little bit when he's on next week. We will be painting up frameworks, which is what Dave was working on. Uh, so yep. we'll be painting up um, one of them. I'll, I'm going to make all of them, and then Gretchen and uh, Jeff can pick which one. We'll fight over up, them. So. We'll stick them in a box and pull randomly. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, um, we are going to start our holiday giveaway on Monday, and that is going to be posted on our Facebook page. So if you are not a part of the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook page, make sure that you go on over to that and you hit join. And I think there's only one question that it asks you, which is be nice. <laughs> but if you can agree to be nice, join the page and then you will have access to those giveaways. Um, which are going to be pretty awesome, I hear. Some pretty interesting things. Yeah. No, it's, it's not not yet. Not till Monday, Dave. No spoilers. Yeah, so you got to be a part of the group to see the game. <laughs> and um, also, that that is where <laughs> that's where you can post pictures of your minis to appear on the show. Um, so make sure you are a part of the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. Yes. <laughs> Join us, one of us. One of us, one of us. us, one of us, one of us. We have a lot of people now. Yeah, we're we're like cruising. So many people. I, in I think place. we said um. Yeah, that's because we said Henry Cavill a lot tonight. <laughs> the numbers just kept ticking over. Really quickly. We just kept yeah. <laughs> the algorithms are like yeah, that's. We're gonna, seems like we're something you would like. <laughs> Those folks are hip. We are. We are hip. We are cool with it. We are. 
<laughs> we are a bunch of dads at a holiday special. That's what we are. Always, always. <laughs> um, but uh, nice. yeah. So make sure you join part of the group. Make sure you share and post. And make sure you join us next Thursday to paint some minis with Jeff Hall while Dave's on a plane. Dave's on a plane. Dave's on a plane. It's, it's <laughs> just like your snakes. Your snakes just on a base. Like say. <laughs> snakes on a base, Dave's on a plane. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right, guys. There we go. Uh, Samuel, Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson's another <laughs> guest. There we go. Yeah. Bye, we'll everybody. Just... <laughs>